I'm Chanel Greco from Subparis, and in this video, I'll show you how you can create an email signature in Gmail. We will cover the five following topics. First, create a signature directly in Gmail. Second, how to use multiple signatures. Third, set signature defaults for new and reply or forward messages. Fourth, best practices concerning images. And fifth, create a stylish signature in Google Docs. I have provided a chapter, so if you want to just jump to whatever tip that you want to see. Let's start with tip number one by creating a signature directly in Gmail. So for that, head over to Gmail and click on the gear icon and then select see all settings. Then scroll a little bit down and you'll see a section called signatures. So it's currently empty. And to create our first section, we simply say create new and we're going to call this Jane, um, I don't know, one, create it. There you go. So we're going to add our information here. Let's say, let's have a combination of text and images. So best regards and write in Jane example. We have some basic formatting we can use here. Like let's say, let's make her name bold. Um, let's add a new paragraph. And now let's add our first image. I want to show you two different separate ways that you can do so. We're going to insert an image like so, and then you see there's actually three ways. So the third would be upload, but we're not going to touch on that subject. Instead, we're going to start out by adding an image through its web address, um, through the URL. So how will we do that? So let's say I wanted to add the Separis logo to the signature. I'm going to right click on it and it says copy link address. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'm, I'm simply going to paste this here. So whoops, got the wrong one. Let's go ahead. Not the link address, but the image is what I need. There you go. So let's go back. It would have been copy image address. That would have been the right thing, but this is also a viable way by simply opening up in a new tab and then adding it like so. Paste. There you go. That looks better. That's our logo. So let's click on select. Um, if it's too big, too small, just click on it once and you can add the size of the image. So that's one way how we're going to add an image. And the second way is going to be the following. Again, we click on insert image and this time we're going to choose something from my drive. I head over to email signature. And let's say we want to add this. In case you noticed, there was no share drive to choose. That is correct. You can only add images from your My Drive. So let's select this image because in this case, we want to even um, take this a step further and add a link. So let's click here on the link. I've selected the image and I click on link. And let's say we wanted this to lead the person who clicks on it to... I don't know, youtube.com. So, okay, good. So we've added a link to that image now. Okay, um, if you're happy with that, that's fine. I'm going to create a second, a second signature because that's going to tie into our second tip. So let's call this Jane two. So we can see afterwards how we can use two different signatures. Um, I don't know. See ya. This is more inf informal. Uh, not Chanel. It's Jane. And something like this. I don't know. Ba, ba. And let's, you know, let's change the color. Let's, let's choose purple here. There you go. Okay. So now I have two separate signatures and on our way to save this, there's one thing that we want to make sure of. Make sure that this box here is ticked. Insert signature before the quoted text in replies. Why? I'll show you afterwards. So let's go ahead and save these changes. Okay, so we've added two signatures directly in Gmail. That was tip number one. Tip number two is how do we use these multiple signatures? So I'm going to compose a new mail. Let me enlarge this window so that we can see it a bit better. Okay, so currently I have absolutely no signature here. Let's add one. 
I can click here on the insert signature icon and I can choose. This was our first signature that we created and this was our second. So if we have multiple signatures, I can choose which signature I want right when I'm composing my message by clicking on insert signature and then choosing and there might be situations where I don't want a signature at all, I can choose that as well. Tip number three, set the default settings for new messages and also for send and forward or reply and forward that was. Okay, so currently, as we saw before, we can add our signatures, but the default setting is no signature at all, and we want to change that. So if you have a look at the signature default settings down here, currently we have no signature, so I could say that for new messages that I sent out, I want to use Jane 1, the somewhat more formal signature, and for reply or forward, we want to use Jane 2 signatures. Um, so depending on if we're sending a new message or a reply, it will look differently. Let's quickly test that out if this works. So compose an email that is the Jane one signature. Perfect. Let's say we wanted to, I don't know, answer to something, um, here, the recent email here, uh, let's say reply, then which signature Jane two. Perfect. So that worked out as intended. Now you remember I mentioned something about make sure to check this tick box and I'll explain you why afterwards. So let's come back to that explanation. It's about inserting signature before the quoted text in replies and remove the dash dash line that precedes it. So what does that do? I think we best can understand this by having a look at two two um, examples. So here is an example of an email thread conversation going on where the box was not ticked. So what happened in our initial message? It looks just like we wanted to. Perfect. This is Adam's answer. And then here, when we replied, we see that we see Jane's content, her reply, then we see the three dots. So the three dots is saying there's more content, the kind of like the hidden content, the previous messages that have been sent. And beneath that is our signature, the dash dash and our signature. So that's when it's not ticked. Let's have a look at what happens when it's ticked. That's the one here with after. So that is all the same, but here we have a very big difference. We see the content of Jane's answer and then directly her signature and then the three dots containing the content from the previous messages. So you see the difference? Usually people prefer this. They want their signature to be right after their content and not beneath the three dots where we have the previous content minified. So if you also want this, then you have to make sure to, in the settings under signature, check this box here, insert signature before the quoted text in replies. So that's how you can steer that. Tip number four, best practices concerning images. Now, there's a couple of things I'd like to mention here. First, and very important, don't add information which is vital only as images. Why? Well, because you never know. The image might not get displayed. Maybe the person has a plain text mode on, doesn't even see your image, and they will be losing out on vital information. So, as uh, for instance, how about for Saperis, we could add a link to the logo so that when people click on the logo, they're brought to the website, but we could also simply kind of like add, now I'm just doing it here, mimicking that it could be, this could be our, our signature. We could also add it like so, link to website, and then explicitly add it um, as link. That would be one way, so they can either click here on the link or click on the logo. Um, that is to deal with the fact that sometimes the images don't get displayed. The second thing that you want to keep in mind is we added this image from our drive. You remember? Now, it's supposed to do the following. Whenever you add an image from your My Drive, it's supposed to automatically grant anyone access. 
but that isn't always the case. That doesn't always work. So if you want to be sure and do everything that you possibly can so that people can see this image, you will want to share this image with anyone who has the link. So that you do in Google Drive. Anyone with the link can view this um, can view this logo or this icon, and then you're on the safe side. They should be able to see it. If you don't do that, and the auto granting of permission somehow fails for whatever reason, then the people would just see a question mark instead of that image. There are sometimes issues with adding images from my drive. Sometimes they disappear or they, are, they aren't displayed. And if you want to make sure that that doesn't happen, or if you might you know, notice that that is happening often, then opt for adding an image the way I added the Saperis logo. So by referencing the URL, so the address of that logo on our website and then adding it as um, with through the web address as I did with our logo. So that's a way how you can deal with that. And I know a lot of people prefer that option instead of adding an image from their My Drive. Now, sometimes people say that they can't see the images in their own signatures or in the signatures of other people. In that case, have a look at more options and make sure that plain text is not selected because look what happens when I select it. It automatically only shows plain text, no formatting and even worse, no images. In order for to get this running, we have to refresh. So let's try it again. Let's close it. Let's open up a new one. Now it's here. So make sure that plain text is not selected. Tip number five, create a stylish signature in Google Docs. So that's exactly what I've done here. I've added a profile image and you know, this is nothing else than a table. This gives me the option of having these two chunks of information on the same line easily. And all I did was say width of the border zero and no one will ever notice that that's a table. So I'll go ahead and simply copy this. And then I'll add it as a new signature here. So let's create new, let's say from docs, click on create, and then let's paste this in here. There you go. Let's save it and test it right out. So we click here on compose mail and uh, let's just expand it to make it a bit easier to see. And then we'll choose from docs. There you go. Now, granted, I'm no stylish person. Um, I'm not gifted at this. So you probably will come up with better ideas, but that would be a neat little hack how you can create a design, which you couldn't do in Gmail, because as you probably know, you can add tables directly in Gmail. So the formatting of the text is a little bit limited. That's why you can use Google docs kind of like a, as a workaround, create it there first and then just simply paste it. And you know, the same goes also for pasting content and tables and graphics directly in Gmail. So let me just paste this again. It should still be in my clipboard. There you go. Um, so this is the signature and this is just the copy of what I, um, the, yeah, the copy of what I copied from um, docs. So you can do that for any type of nice visualization within Gmail. I'm curious, how do you create your email signatures for Gmail? Do you create it, create it directly in Gmail itself? Or do you use one of the many add-ons or services, some paid, some for free that you can use to auto generate or to generate signatures? Let us know in the comment section below. And while you're here, why don't you also go ahead and click on the subscribe button below. Uh, it's the big old red button because I don't want you to miss out on any of our video tutorials that we release about Gmail, Google Drive, or just Google workspace in general.